after setting up your Microsoft 365 and creating your email account, you will need to move your email history over the new mailboxes. How can you do this? In a previous video, I explained how to migrate your emails to Microsoft 365 using the migration tool in the classic Exchange Admin Center. Microsoft has recently introduced a new and improved Exchange Admin Center with a more user-friendly interface and advanced features, including a new migration tool. My name is Carlos, and in today's video, I will explain how to use this new migration tool to easily migrate your email history to Microsoft 365. So, whether you are a small business owner, an IT administrator, or simply looking to upgrade your email system, this new migration tool will make your life easier when transferring your email service to Microsoft 365. By the way, if you are interested in learning how to purchase and set up Microsoft 365 for your business, here I have a video that explains how to do it step by step. Now, as you may know, there are other options to migrate emails, like for example, exporting them to a PST file in Microsoft Outlook, and then importing it back to Microsoft 365. This could work well for one or just a few accounts, but what if you had to do this for multiple mailboxes? Even for one single account, I have found the Microsoft Migration tool to be easier to use than exporting and importing from Outlook. One of the biggest advantages of using the Microsoft 365 tool is that you will be able to migrate multiple email accounts at the same time in an easy way. And here, I will tell you how to use it. First, I will tell you what you will need before starting. You need all users' email passwords. It is the password where you want to migrate from. The server where you are migrating from needs to support IMAP protocol. Most of the email services are able to work with this protocol. Then you will need the IMAP server information, incoming server name, port, and encryption. If you are unsure about this, think about the email settings that you use to configure your email accounts on your devices. You can also contact your current email provider and ask for this information. Keep in mind that you will be able to migrate emails from all the email accounts. For example, if you have an email account called info at your domain.com and you want to move it over an email account called carlos at your domain.com, the migration tool will allow you to do this as well. You will need to create all the email accounts in Microsoft 365 before starting the migration. I mean, the migration process does not create the email accounts in Microsoft 365. As part of the process, you will need to create a CSV file with the list of email addresses and their passwords. I will show you how to create it in a moment. You will also need to have admin role to access the Microsoft 365 Admin Center and the new Exchange Admin Center. So let's now jump into our computer. So we will need to access our Microsoft 365 account. And then we need to access the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. We should be able to find the icon here, Admin. If you don't see it here, you can click on the nine little dots on the upper left corner. And you can find it here. You can also search for it within all apps. Let's click on Admin. We will be able to find the Admin icon if our account has been assigned with the Admin role. Within the Microsoft 365 Admin Center, we need to click here on the three little dashes to expand the menu. And then we need to click on Show All. If we scroll down, we will find Exchange. It will give us access to the Exchange Admin Center. Before proceeding, let's have a look to the users we have in this account. Under Users, we need to click here and then click on Active Users. It will show all the users within our Microsoft 365 account. In our example, we're going to migrate only one user, which is this one, carlos at itbe.cloud. You should know that the migration tool will allow you to migrate multiple email accounts at the same time. We will see how we can do that. Let's now go to the Exchange Admin Center. We click again on the three little dashes, and then we scroll down, and we click on Exchange. 
it has taken us to the new Exchange Admin Center. If for any reason we want to go to the classic Exchange Admin Center, we will find it here. However, the migration tool has been moved to the new Exchange Admin Center, and we will find it under Migration. Now here is we will start configuring the migration batches. To start configuring the migration, we need to click on Add Migration Batch. First, we need to add a name for the migration. I'm going to name it ITBE Migration 1. Then I need to select the migration path. And here I have two options, Migrate to Exchange Online or Migrate from Exchange Online. In our case, it is a migration to Exchange Online. Then we select this option. Now we will click on Next. We will need to select the type of migration. We click here, and we will find here the different type of migrations that this tool can provide. The first four options that we have here are migration from other Exchange servers. We also find here an option to migrate from Google Workspace. And the last option that we see here is the IMAP migration, which is the one that we are going to use. Most of the times, small businesses will need to migrate from another IMAP server. So this is the option that we need to select. IMAP migration. As we can read here, this option migrates the content of users' mailboxes from your source email system to Microsoft 365. If your source email system supports IMAP, you can migrate batches of mailboxes until all mailboxes are migrated. Every batch can contain multiple email accounts. Then we need to click on Next. Now here we can read instructions about the migration. We need to create the users in Microsoft 365 before your migration start, each user must have a Microsoft 365 mailbox. We need to add our domain name to Microsoft 365 before starting the migration. We need to have the full name of the email server where we are migrating from. And we will need to create the file that contains the list of mailboxes, which is something that we will do in a moment. If you want to find detailed information about that file, we can click here. However, I will create the file that we need and you will see the details. Let's click Next. In this step, we need to select the migration point. The migration point is the server where we are going to migrate from. Since we haven't run any migration before, if I try to click here, I won't find any migration point. So I need to create one. Then I click here, create a new migration endpoint. Then we click on Next. We have to create a name for the migration point I'm going to name it IMAP server, and I'm going to leave these values by default. Maximum concurrent migrations, 20, and maximum concurrent incremental syncs, 10. Then I click on Next. I need to enter the server information. Again, the server where we are migrating from. Our server name is mail.itbe.cloud. The type of authentication is basic. Our server doesn't work with any type of encryption. So we select None. However, we also have the option to work with SSL or TLS. And then we need to select the port. In this case, our server works with 143. This is the information of the IMAP server. If we don't know this information, we can contact our current email service provider. This is also the information that we used to configure our email account in our devices. The migration tool had an initial connection with the server and it was successful. So the IMAP endpoint was created. Then we need to click on Next again. This is the moment where we need to select the file with the list of users or mailboxes that we are going to migrate. We need to create that file. If you click here on these links, you will be able to download a sample of the file that you need to create. For this example, I'm going to create the file now. To create the file, I'm going to use Notepad, which is a Windows tool. We are going to create a CSV file, which is a comma-separated value. I can also use Excel to create this file. I'm going to open Notepad with my file. The file will have this format. In the first line, we will have this email address, comma, username, comma, password. In the second line, and also in the third, fourth, or fifth line, I will add information about the mailboxes that I'm going to migrate. As the email address, I'm going to enter the email address in Microsoft 365. 
as a username, I'm going to enter the email address or mailbox that I'm going to migrate from. And then the next value is going to be the password of the email account within the source server. This is not the password for the Microsoft CTT5 account. This is the password for the source mailbox. So this format allow me to migrate from a different email account. For example, I could have a second line where I'm going to migrate to a email account in Microsoft 365 called sales at itbe.cloud from another email account, which is info at itbe.cloud. And this will be the password in the source mail server. Then you can continue adding as many lines as mailboxes you are going to migrate within the same file. Since I'm going to migrate only one email account, I'm just going to delete this line. I have to make sure that I delete or remove any additional lines. Then I will click on file and I'm going to save as, I'm going to call it ITB underscore migration one. And because it is a CSV file, I'm going to add dot CSV. Then I click on save. So we click on browse to search for the file that we just created. We select it, click on open. And we can see here that our migration tool has successfully found one user within this file. This is the user that we're going to migrate. Then we need to click on next. Here we have a couple of options. We can select folders that we can skip during the migration. And we can also select the time range that we are going to migrate. We're not going to select any of them. Then we click on next. The last step in this configuration allow us to select the email account where we want to receive a report when the migration is complete. We just need to enter the email address. We can also select to start the migration manually, automatically, or start a date and time to start the migration. In our example, we're going to start the migration automatically. So we are now ready and we can click on save. The migration batch has been created and now the migration will start. We are now back on their migration batches and we can see here the migration batch that we just created, ITB migration one. And we can also see the status, syncing. We can leave this page and come back at any time to have a look of the migration status. The migration actually could take several hours depending on the number of emails that we need to migrate. Once the migration has been completed, the mailboxes in the source mail server will remain the same. No emails will be deleted during the migration. If I click over the migration batch, I will be able to see details about the migration. If I click here, view details, it will tell me the number of items that has been synced. At this moment, the migration is already complete and I can see the status synced and data consistency is perfect. So all the emails were migrated. Something that we need to be aware about this type of migration is that it only migrates emails. It doesn't migrate contacts or calendars. The migration process could take several hours, depending on the number of emails and also on the load on the servers. When the migration is complete, you will receive an email. You can also access the Exchange Admin Center and check the migration status. I hope this video will help you to complete the migration of your email accounts to Microsoft CTT5. If you like it, please give a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like this one, or if you want to find it easy again in the future, you can hit the subscribe button. Remember, it is free and it helps me to continue creating content like this one. You can also help me by donating with the super thanks button just beside the like button. Thank you and I hope to see you next time.